Hello, it's Delaxi, and today we are going over the flowers Aliwa. This is my second video in the series where we will eventually be going over all of the flowers of Genshin Impact. The Lotus. We will start with the Lotus because the Lotus has a tie in to what Liwa represents as a whole. And this is kind of important for some of the other tie ins we're going to have later on. There are two cultures at play here Greek culture and Chinese culture, but we will focus on Greek culture for the Lotus. The ancient Greeks thought the lotus represented the sun, as the lotus will dip below the surface at sunset and rise again to the surface at sunrise. This represents life, death, and rebirth. Seeing as lotuses are found in some prominent areas of Liyue, the lore purpose was meant to be obvious. Zongli even says this. This sounds like a metaphor for Greek mythology, where one must cross the river Styx to reach the underworld where they would then settle. Speaking of the Archon, his alternative name Morax represents the demon Morax. This name means to delay, which is inevitably what happens to each Archon's lifespan when they gain their power. Add in the fact that Liyue's environment is clearly in an eternal state of fall, and it all makes sense. Liyue is the place of death. But there's also symbolism for rebirth. For one, we have the Lotus just mentioned. Lotuses represent rebirth but also glaze lilies go through a transformation where they open in the dead of night and close in the daylight. Songli also used to be Morax, though his death was faked, he still underwent a transformation when he became the human Zongli. This was a rebirth for Zongli, but also for the nation itself as they lost their only leader. So much lore, and yet, the lotus easily and elegantly represents it all. Next up, we have Violet Grass. Violet grass grows along the cliffs in Liyue. It is based on the cliff-growing bellflower, Campanula hagiella. Bellflower also likes to grow along cliffs, sometimes by the shore, and since Liyue is by an ocean and mountains tend to be humid, the combination of these factors means Liyue's cliffs are likely pretty humid and the perfect environment for these. Interestingly, it is not actually native to China though. When I do ID these flowers, I consider appearance along with its native range and habitat. While I do think that finding regional natives is important, I do not think it is as important as the overall appearance and environment in which the flowers thrive. After all, many flowers that are popular in one country ended up originating from another, and oftentimes where flowers originate is speculation anyway. So I doubt this was something that was even considered when the devs were deciding which flowers to put in each region. So one last thing makes this ID really obvious, and that's that violet grass and bellflower both have no spaces between their root words. This is some really solid proof that this is the right ID. So this next one's going to be a little bit different. Normally I wouldn't include random wildflowers, but I recognized these immediately when I was running around the Liyue Highlands. Surprisingly, these flowers have enough detail to actually ID them. And I'm guessing that this is goldenrod. Goldenrod blooms in late summer and into fall. There are so many species of goldenrod, different variations exist all over the world naturally, so it was hard to pinpoint the exact one. Regardless, I ended up settling on Solidago decorans. It also has less dense greenery below its flowers, while many other varieties have notable leafage. Goldenrod is a symbol in many cultures as well that represents the sun, gold, and prosperity. This definitely fits in with the themes of Liyue. Bamboo shoots. Although this does not need an ID, it does have some relevance to the lore. In Chinese culture, bamboo represents strength, growth, and virtue. It is also believed to possess soul and emotion. This goes along with the life and death theme of Liyue, as living creates strength and growth, and death is the transfer of soul into another existence. Glaze Lily. This is definitely my favorite on the list. These grow in Liyue exclusively and open up during the night. Its real life counterpart is a large flower species with a very pleasant and strong smell that also opens up at night. It is called Queen of the Night, and these produce huge blooms that are extremely fragrant. They are associated with bringing luck to whoever views them because they only bloom once a year. This makes it easy to miss. But if it blooms only once a year, then how would that make sense for lore? In game, this can be explained if all regions are an eternal samsara. 
Perhaps this flower was intended to hint at future lore since the beginning of Genshin. Joyun Chili Found in Joyun Karst, these chilies look like bell peppers with flowers on the end. Though it's clearly a chili, it might more accurately be a habanero chili pepper. Environments for chili is pretty broad, so it fits in with Liyua. The one issue is that Joyun Chili opens up at the bottom, and no pepper really does this. There's no lore relevance, but did you know spicy isn't a taste? You don't taste spice, you feel spice. Spiciness is a texture. Next up is the silk flower. So nothing looks like this flower, and silk is made by caterpillars from trees and plants that look nothing like this. However, the bush you harvest from does look like a Chinese fringe flower. It's just that the flowers did not match up. Silk flowers, when searched, actually yield tons of fake flowers. Upon looking into it, I discovered that fake flowers used to be called silk flowers, since that's what they were made of. These flowers also tend to be around structures in Genshin, which indicates that maybe NPCs are actually the ones doing this, creating them, and placing them for Traveler to collect. Last, we have Chinsing. This was a tough one at first. There are many white flowers, many that like mountains, and many that exist in China. But I ended up finding an article mentioning that Chinsing is the name of a Chinese tea cultivar made from camellia plant, aka the tea plant. So therefore the ID is certainly camellia. Camellia does like the mountainous warm regions of China and it also blooms in fall. In Chinese culture this represents love and devotion. In one of Zhongli's voice lines he asks you to bring him a bunch of them. Hmm, 